And good morning, Morris, Brandon, family, students, parents, teachers. It is a beautiful Tuesday, Cinco de Mayo, May 5th, and we are here in our eighth week of virtual learning. We have some guests today. We have not revealed our special guest, but before we do anything, let's say good morning to Mr. Hudson. Good morning. Good morning. All right, we have Miss McKinley here who's going to share some awesome information. Miss McKinley, good morning. Good morning, good morning. everybody. You are also a special guest, by the way, but you may Thank have you. your time coming forward. And then, of course, we have our active student council president at Morris Brandon, fifth grader, Lily De Christina. Good morning, Lily. Morning. How are you and how have you been? Good. How are you? Fantastic. We are so glad you're here. And Lily and Miss McKinley are here. They're going to share some information with us in just a few minutes. But before I move on, Mr. Hudson, First of all, I do see that we have an empty square there. It looks like it's going to be a special guest. Any idea who this one might be? I don't know. Could it be know. someone that knows about Cinco de Mayo? Well, it could be. <laughs> I'll give you an answer. <laughs> it is a primary center teacher, and this teacher teaches some of our ESOL students or our language learners. <gasps> You made it too easy. That has to be Miss Cutshaw. Hello. Hola. Hola, Miss Cutshaw. Hey, Miss Cutshaw. Hi, everyone. I miss you all. Hi, boys and girls. I miss you. Miss Cutshaw, we're so glad you are here today joining us on this beautiful Cinco de Mayo. It's going to be you, a Mr. great day. Today. Do you have anything you want to say to your students? No, I just want to say hi and keep on reading so we can make sure that Mr. Hudson kisses the cow and enjoy your afternoon in the sun because it's a beautiful day outside. All right. Well, welcome, welcome. Let's get started with it. As always, we're going to start our day with our Pledge of Allegiance. Students, if you are willing to, please stand, put your hand over your heart, repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so we're going to start, um, we're going to switch our slides up a little bit today because we want to jump into our fifth grade memories because we have three weeks left in the school year and we want to make sure that our fifth graders have the best send off they can have. So we're going to share a couple uh, videos with you on our fifth graders and then we're going to hand it off to Lily who's going to share her memory and then give us uh, some more information. Are you ready Mr. Hudson? What? All right let's see who we got here. I know who it is. Hi my name is Hunter Stillman. I'm in fifth grade in Ms. Heron's homeroom and my favorite random memory was being in Ms. McLaughlin's fourth grade class. All right Ms. McLaughlin's fourth grade class. The whole year was a memory for Hunter. Awesome. Yeah. My favorite memory of fifth grade was the dunk tank uh, because I got to like dunk my friends and it was just really fun. All right, the dunk, I think I was landed in the dunk tank too. I remember that. A number of times. <laughs> oh, Ethan, all right. Oh, Ethan. Uh oh, one second. Hello, Ethan here, Ms. Richards' fifth grade class, and my favorite Morris Minute of memory was last year when I was in fourth grade, we went to the NFL Play, play 60 experience and the Super Bowl was here. That awesome. So we have two out of the three fifth graders' favorite memories was in fourth grade, so it's perfectly appropriate that Ms. McKinley is here too. I know, we'll have to see what Lily has to say about her favorite memory. I am in Ms. Heron's homeroom, and my favorite memory was in third grade when we found out we were looping with Ms. McKinley. Yeah, oh, that was a great one. <laughs> it all the goes full circle. Look at that. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I loved it. That was a good well, Lily, you are also here to tell us a little bit about um, what's going on with, uh, with you and some fundraising that we're doing in school right now. So I'm going to hand it over to you and Ms. McKinley. All right. So... Once again this year, we are raising money for the Haiti Deaf Academy, and we're calling our fundraiser this year, Quarren Teamwork Makes the Dream Work. Haiti needs our help. And so this year, um, last year, they were in need of medical supplies. This year, though, um, what they really need are just their basic necessities like food and water and medical supplies. 
So you may remember um, over the past five years, we've actually been helping Haiti Deaf Academy. So put some pictures of the memories. I see Caroline Meeser there, a fifth grader. And I also see May Sutliff, also a fifth grader back from a few years ago. And then you'll see um, a couple pictures from our Band-Aids last year, Bucks for Band-Aids, and then when we did all the money reaps. So we're so excited for another year, even though we're virtual, but another year to still be able to help them out, but also you get something really cool out of it. So this year, um, to raise money, we are going, you can buy a shirt or a sweatshirt, and these are on the Moore's Brandon website. And so one way that you could raise money, um, besides having your parents buy them for you, is you could raise some money um, doing your own chores around the house. Um, you can also, a way to help is that you can tell your friends about it. So because the more money we raise, um, the better. It'll help these kids and they'll get uh, their, their basic needs met. And we talked about um, sharing with your friends. We know you can't actually see them in person, but you could take sidewalk chalk things in your street or on your driveway. You can make signs put around your neighborhood. Just a way to spread the word um, that we're helping Haiti, but also we're celebrating and commemorating our virtual learning experience. Awesome. So, Miss McKinley, I yeah, know yeah. we've only put the shirts out for a short amount of time, but how many people have already ordered their shirts? Do you know? So, as of right now, I can actually check right now. We have had 21 orders, but I believe they've ordered about 40 total things. So, people are ordering things for their parents, all their siblings, and we've already raised in just one day, $294 to go to wow. help Haiti, which is awesome. awesome. And the best part about this shirt, I love it. Well, the best part is probably raising the money, but the second best part is that we have a shirt for every one of our Brandon staff members as well. So um, for Teacher Appreciation Week. So awesome job, Ms. McKinley. And to our student council president, Ms. Lilly, do you have anything else you want to say before you jump off? Um, just to make sure to spread the word because, and you can tell your friends, and like Ms. McKinley said, you can make signs and put them up around the neighborhood and just spread the word. Awesome. Thanks, Lily. Thank Lily, you. Bye. Bye, Lily. Bye. Bye. Lily. All right. So let's keep going, Mr. Hudson. So we had a number of teachers and staff and students that voted on different students that showed that they were principaled in the school. And one of the first students that we'll feature today is Addison Milner. So thanks for always showing integrity, being honest, and conducting yourself as a principal young lady around the school. Salutes to you. Yay, Addison. Race to Read, up 1,170 minutes. No horn today. Happy birthday to AJ and Ansley. Happy birthday. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, guys. All right, take it away, cut y'all. Just kidding, I'll sing it for you. Thank Happy you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, AJ and Ansley. Happy birthday to you. Great singing. <laughs> Um, I actually have a physical activity update for you today. I know that Mr. Bland and Mr. Hudson have been sharing some of the ways that you can exercise and keep moving. So Ms. Cutshaw and I were actually talking and we've been doing something similar around our houses. I don't have weights at my house. I've been going on lots of um, walks around my neighborhood, but I found cans of beans that can substitute for weights. Ms. Cutshaw, what do you use? I use frozen. This is frozen uh, Gatorade. And it's, it's pretty heavy and it's maybe a little lighter than the uh, cans. It's but awesome. I use these and then if I get hot, I can put it on my neck and cool myself off. Cool. So you can use pretty much anything around your house to just, even while you're on a Zoom class, my class or Zoom call, my class has seen me doing some of my workouts. It's easy way to stay busy. Awesome. So so not having weights is no excuse. I love it. Yes. Find anything in your house that has some weight to it. Great work. And I love how we've gone from Zumba workouts to Zoom workouts. <laughs> yes. Good one. SEL Minute. Today we want to talk about being productive. So even though you may not be accomplishing all of the things on your to-do list, make sure you're getting done what you can so you can feel a sense of purpose each day. Don't push yourself. 
but try to set realistic expectations of yourself. And if you remember about that, self-care is more about just making sure that you do what you need to do, but also take care of yourself and keep your health and, and mental well-being in mind as you do the things that you need to accomplish each day. All right. Yeah. So, Mr. Bland, yeah. when it comes to being productive, I know that you already, you get up at your regular schedule, but what else do you do to make sure that you're productive every day? Well, you know, for me, it's really about keeping that schedule. It is so hard to feel productive when you've been at home for so long and it can really down on yourself. But first of all, it's important to know that while you need to be productive, it's also important to understand that we are in a completely different situation than we've ever been in. So don't take it too hard on yourself if you feel like you're not getting what you need to be um, get done every day. But for me, it's about keeping to my routine, doing the best I can, getting up when I normally get up and still going to bed when I'm supposed to go to bed in order for me to take the time I need the next day to get stuff done. So I like to keep that schedule. How about you, Miss McKinley? Yeah, I've been doing the same thing. I've been keeping a routine, keeping a schedule, but definitely finding some time, like some me time. My new favorite activity is taking a book and sitting outside of my house. So I've actually read more books during this time than I think I ever have. Um, I'm currently working on our fourth grade book, Walk Two Moons, which we just started today. So I love just sitting outside, getting some sun, seeing my neighbors as they walk by, and just not trying to overdo it. Checking one thing off a to-do list a day is good for me. Definitely. Liz. Yeah. And Ms. Cutshaw? Yes, I like to walk in my neighborhood also, and that's where I meet all my neighbors because we're all walking at the same time and we just say hi and update if there's anything happening in the community. And I also read, I, but I sit on my back porch. I'm currently getting a, a back por porch put on, so I'm just observing how they're, they're putting it all together and um, just talking to my uh, friends on Skype or on the phone. So I'm, I'm a really big checklist person and I get it when I don't see too many things checked off, but as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do, working at it, all you can do is your best every day, and then what you don't accomplish today, guess what? There's tomorrow. So I make sure that I stop at a certain point and I go out and I take walks or just spend some time on something that I really wanna do for myself. So children, keep doing your work, but make sure that you set time to do those things that you really like to do and that you enjoy. Okay, awesome. So I have to do the joke of the day because this was one of my favorite jokes growing up. And Mr. Hudson can tell you that I definitely submitted this one. So my question today and the joke today is, what do you call a sleeping bull? That's a good one, I don't know. No, I don't know either. There we well, go. A bulldozer. bulldozer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's and again, I, I'm not lying when I tell you I used to tell that joke when I was five years old. So <laughs> that's why that one's in there. All right. So as always, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to highlight some awesome Flex Friday activities for you. Each one of us will take a slide. Let's kick off and let's see how our students did last week. All right, so Zachary did roll a monster. Awesome job on that Flex Friday, hashtag MB Flex. Colton did getting ready with dad to make a bubble lamp. So he made a bubble lamp with his father. And one of the beautiful things about Flex Friday is you can sit down with your parents and do a couple of activities together. So fabulous Flex Friday activity, Mr. Colton. And coach, dad. Mary Pittman makes a water xylophone. Oh, that looks fun. Thank you, Mary Emmett. Sloan and Owen did some chalk art. I love seeing all the chalk art that people have been doing with this Flex Friday. It's really cool and I've seen it around my neighborhood too, so keep it up. Nora and Olivia Meyer, bubble art neighborhood scavenger hunt. So they went on a scavenger hunt looking for various things. And then they did bubble art, which looks really, really interesting. I'd like to try it sometime. They have different colors of um, bubbles. Great looks job. Looks interesting. Nice. Well, Henry did the bubble lamp in the bag. And I know Miss Lane would be so happy every time I see the lava lamp in the bag or bubble lamp, I think of Miss Lane since she demonstrated that to us. Great job, Henry. 
All right, and last but not least, we want to continue to feature our students on Flex Friday, so make sure you are tagging us in hashtag MBFlex. A couple things, mom and dad, if you're back there making your coffee or your orange juice, just listen up for me real quick. This week, we are celebrating our teachers. It is National Staff Appreciation Day, actually today, but we're going to celebrate them all week long, and we're going to, um, if you want to thank a teacher, which many of you have done, we can always hashtag that as thanks APS teachers. That's going on all week and our admin are taking care of our teachers this week. I wanna remind you about our fun run. We talked a lot about this last week. The fun run is happening until this Friday. We need you to get outside, run a mile and log um, your information or on Facebook or on Coach Wyman's Flipgrid. Um, and we'll have some more information on that from your teachers. You can always ask them for that link. We're also in the middle of our APS 5K. We're encouraging all of our families to get out and run a 5K or walk a 5K. Make sure that you are, if you're a student, that you're being supervised and that you're also practicing social distancing. But if you want to log your run, you can use hashtag APS Rocks 5K. And I know that I'll be running that one too. I ran my fun run this morning, actually. Um, yeah, I need to. Yeah. Uh, Parent Coffee Talk this Friday, my last one of the year, parents. Uh, I'll have all the information in the B-mail tomorrow of the Zoom link you can use to log in. There's also a way you can submit your questions prior, but I will also be taking some live questions as well. So that is this Friday at 10 a.m. and I'll get the time in there for tomorrow. Uh, we'll share a Zoom link. We'll also record that. We will share that with you, but um, take that this Friday, spread the word. I'm hoping to see some rising kindergarten families on there as well. Um, Ms. McKinley, since you're here, do you want to tell us real quickly, just a quick blurb about 521 and what's happening? Sure. Okay. So save the date for the Hive Drive. That's happening on May 21st. It's the second to last day of school. Um, we're working on planning our parade route right now, but we are going to release that in advance so you'll know if we pass by your house or if we don't and where you can go to watch all of your teachers drive through and celebrate the end of an awesome school year. Awesome. Yay. And last but not least, or your quarantine shirts, the links are available to you in the B-mail and from your teachers. All right, well, Ms. Cutshaw, you were our special guest today. You got any parting words for us? Everyone continue to keep reading and it was nice to see you and all have a great, great afternoon. Nice seeing y'all, bye. McKinley, anything for me? Yeah, thanks for having me, bye. Bye guys, bye. Hudson, see you tomorrow. See you on bye, the Mr. Hudson, bye Mr. Bland.